Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'd like to give you some tips about how to successfully set odd-shaped stones. Specifically, I'm going to give you information about setting unique cabochon stones that have non-standardized cut. In other words, they don't fit into standard size bezel cups that are commercially available. The first thing that you need to be aware of is the height of the bezel. Now many of you are wondering what height the bezel should be for a unique stone. Let me show you. There are three general types of cuts for cabochons. A perfectly formed cabochon will have a hemispherical dome to it with a flat bottom. The height of the bezel should start at the area where the stone begins to make its turn over the top. So that would be approximately here on this type of cut. Some stones are cut directly from slab material, which means that they'll have straight walls and then start their way over the top with a dome. In this case, you would need a much higher bezel, and that would be to about here. In some instances, the stone cutter wasn't sure which side of the slab would produce the most interesting stone. So what they've done is they've begun to polish on both sides and ended up creating sort of a lozenge shape. Now, if this is the type of stone that you have, what you'll need to do is determine where the stone will sit within the bezel itself on a base and then come to an area where the stone starts its way over the top. So this would be the proper height of your bezel cup. But you can see that this type of stone is rounded on the bottom so it would want to rock or wiggle within the bezel. In order to stop that, there are several ways that you could accomplish this. One would be to simply drop a jump ring into the bezel cup of the same material that the bezel cup is made from so that you wouldn't see a color shift if you're using a transparent or clear stone. If you're using an opaque stone, you could use something like the lid of a coffee can. And what you could do is simply cut out a little donut from that shape and drop it into the bezel cup. This same material is great for also boosting a stone that's cut particularly thin. Like I said, you would want to use this for opaque stones, but if you have a transparent or translucent stone, you might be able to get away with clear material. Now, if you use bezel material that's too high, you may need to adjust the height of the bezel, and you would do that with a file. I would use a very fine tooth file. This is because if you use a very coarse cut file, it's more likely to get caught on the bezel and bend it. Whereas if it's a fine cut, it'll glide over the top of the bezel cup. Now, in any instance when you, where you use a file, you're likely to produce a bit of a burr on either side of where you've just filed. So in this case, if I'm going to file across a bezel such as this one here, I would then want to take the triangle scraper and go around the interior and the exterior of the bezel to remove any burr before I set the stone. Now, throughout the course, I've been using a bezel rocker such as this one in order to secure the stone within the bezel. If you don't have a bezel rocker, you could also substitute with a curved burnisher. Now, if you've used a stone of a different type of shape, like a triangle or a square stone, it's imperative that you set those stones using a technique where you set the corners first. So, moving over here, I have a triangle and a square stone. In each case, I would want to set these two styles of stones by pushing on their corners first. So, in these cases, I would move to these corners and strike here first. Sometimes you're not able to get a hard enough push using either a burnisher or a bezel rocker. And in that case, what you would need to do is substitute with a bezel pusher which is basically a handle equipped with a straight shaft of metal that has a flat surface at the bottom. Now you would strike the handle using a chasing hammer. The chasing hammer has a wide face, so you 
are guaranteed to actually hit the handle every single time that you strike it. You may want to practice before you actually go to work on your finished item. If you want to practice, I recommend that you take pieces of wood and you could hot glue a bezel set onto a scrap piece of copper using hot glue to make the item secure to the piece of wood and then when you need to remove it you can simply heat the hot glue again with a hair dryer and scrape the glue away. You could use these items in a bench vise in order to hold them in order to practice. Now you can also use this bench vise to actually hold a finished piece of goods such as the ring that we've been working on and set it directly holding it inside of the vise. Okay, let's talk about a few other items. Now, I've been talking about commercially produced die struck bezel cups. They come in multiples and in various sizes. Just be sure that you know what size that you need. In most cases, you just want to know the length and width of the base of the stone. For example, in an oval stone, I would want to know its length and its width in order to order the appropriate size bezel cup. Now, the last thing I want to mention is how to handle the stones. Sometimes the stones are very small and they're difficult to pick up with your fingertips. You could use a wax stick. This is simply a piece of dowel that has some sticky wax attached to the end of it that's formed into a point. You can use that point to pick up small stones and carry them over to the bezel where you drop them in. Any residual wax that's left on the surface of the stone can be wiped away using a selvet cloth or a microfiber dusting cloth, which you could find at any grocery store. I hope that these tips help you successfully set your odd-shaped stones. Please be sure to check out our other videos and products on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.